Hey everybody, welcome back to Maya Mondays. So a few weeks ago on my YouTube channel, someone asked about Inher and if I could share any tips and tricks with it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. This is not a Maya 101, here's everything you need to know about Inher that would take hours to go over, but this will give you a, a, good, uh, a good understanding of a couple of the things that I think are useful um, to make Inher work well inside of Maya. Keep in mind that Inher is great for things other than just hair effects, right? Like you could use it to make ropes or spider webs or a bowl of spaghetti or you could use it as the physics engine to drive spline IK down a series of joints. There's actually a bonus tool that sets that up automatically for you for secondary animation on little little things and things stuff like that. It can also be um, tied into XGen really efficiently. There's an actual create inhere button inside of XGen that will make the guides be dynamically driven by an inhere system. So all the stuff that I'm talking about today with inhere sort of does have a tie back into the way you would, would dynamically move hair inside of XGen. So this is uh, Maya 2015, which means Inher now shows up in Viewport 2.0, which is awesome. So we'll be uh, we'll be using this Sven character that was originally put together for uh, for some of the launch demos to uh, to talk about Inher today. I've got a piece of geometry inside of here that we're going to, uh, it was just a duplicate of this guy's head with some faces deleted that we're going to use to emit some hair from. So what we want to do is just grow some hair off of this guy, relax the hair, and once we get into a nice relaxed state, set that as our start and current position that the hair tries to, uh, tries to start from and maintain. So it's a pretty straightforward workflow, and I'll show you some of the things that are inherently wrong with it as we go along the way and, and how to work around those. So... If we go ahead and we create Inher inside of Maya, you can either use the Inher shelf or you can switch your menus over to Dynamics and use the drop down to do it. So we'll say uh, create Inher will bring up the options for this guy. It's going to output paint effects. Um, I'm not really worried about using paint effects right now. I just want to get the NURBS curve. So we'll just put that to NURBS curves. I'm going to set my U and V density a little bit higher. And I'm going to leave the points per hair at 10 and the length at 5 and we'll just say apply. So what does happen here is my hair comes out and it's actually really long for my character and it only has, if we look at our um, component selection here of these guys, 10 points down it. So this is this is not good by default, right? If, if I had, if I wanted hair this long on my character, I'd want like 100 points going down the length of that hair to capture its, its um, sort of the detail that you'd want to have in there. So the hair's doesn't have enough points and it's also way too long. And the reason that happened is because if you look at my character here, he was just modeled out on the grid, right? So his head's only like two units wide. It's like two centimeters wide. So this is going to create all kinds of problems for us, not only with the initial creation of the hair, but also with the dynamic attributes on the hair. So this is, um, this is something that's really important to think about with all the dynamics inside of Maya and in hair in particular in this example is scale really does matter and size really does matter. So let's undo that and let's Let's uh, modify this a little bit to make it look a little bit better. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get good UVs on my on my character. You want to have good UVs to start with. So if we display the UV texture window for this guy, you can see those UVs are obviously a mess, right? So we'll grab those guys and we'll use that unfold tool that was, again, new in 2015 to sort of tidy that stuff up. And that looks, you know, obviously a lot better. I'm going to decrease uh, the length of my hair to, uh, I don't know, something like two, and I'm going to give it 30 points. Oops, let's grab a piece of geometry and spit that hair out. So now I've got some hair. Obviously what we're looking at is um, is its current position and its start position. It's all just shooting off the normals of that guy. So what we want to do is we want to go through a process of relaxing this hair. So if we hit our playback button, the hair is going to sort of drop down. Let's go to frame one here and play that back. So the hair drops down. It, you know, it's, it's a little bit long and it doesn't look that great. It's obviously passing through stuff. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to deal with this scale issue, right? The fact that my character's head's two centimeters wide, that's not really cool. So we're going to go ahead and jump to the solver node, and we can just grab it right here. And what we want to do is we want to increase um, it so that my character's head's a little bit bigger. So conveniently located in the scale attributes is a slider, and this allows me to make it behave differently, right? I can compensate for this weird scale that my character is. So if I put this to a value of 0.1, well that basically means now that each one of these units is now 10 units, right? So his head's now 20 centimeters wide, you know, something like that, which is obviously not exactly what we'd want. So let's just make that a little bit less than um, that. We'll go to a value of 0.1. 
I don't know, 175 or something like that. So it's like 15, 15 centimeters wide now. So that's pretty cool. The other thing that I want to talk about with you about while we're in this solver node is the substeps. So if you have a lot of collisions and a lot of self collisions, often increasing the substeps is not only going to make your solve more accurate, it could also potentially speed it up because the collision pairs are more efficient in their evaluation because they're not getting hung up and bound up and things like that. So putting that up to a, you know, a slightly higher value, um, not only, like I said, makes it look better and be more realistic, but it can also often give you a speed improvement, especially if you have high collision count. So we'll go ahead and play this back now. And obviously the sim looks a lot different. Look at that hair. It stretches way, way, way down there. So that's not cool. And basically the reason that happens is those default attributes on the hair system are set up for, you know, a different set of parameters than what we have now. They're not really, really set up to be real world scale and they're not really set up to deal with all those high point counts. So we need to go in here and change some of these properties. The main one that we really need to change is this stretch resistance. So let's put that up to 100. The compression resistance, we can put that guy up. You know, you want to give it a little bit more bend resistance also. So just crank those guys up. And the higher the CV count, the more stretch resistance you're going to need. So now you can see my hair isn't as stretchy. It looks a little bit better. But to do this initial relaxing, that we were trying to do to get our head to kind of drape down and fall and look realistic, we need to continue to modify it, right? So I want to get a collision object in there for it to collide with so it doesn't just kind of pass through his face like it was. And I could use the geometry that lives here. It's going to be a little slow to calculate. So to, to keep the demo moving along or the tutorial moving along a little bit faster, I'm just going to go ahead and, and create a, a simple polygon object and use that as, as my collision object. So we'll just, you know, position this guy here and I don't know, whatever, kind of scale it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to give it something to, to collide with here so that the hair looks a little bit a little bit better. It doesn't have, like I said, it doesn't have to really be, you know, great, good enough. And I'll just duplicate that and, you know, maybe rotate it a little bit and then scale that dude out sort of like that and give him something for his, his little... gear here that's around his neck so that that's that's cool it doesn't have to be perfect so with that done we'll go ahead and we'll create some collision objects for that guy so we'll just say in mesh make a passive collider hit my g key to repeat my last function we can hide those guys we don't need to see them anymore they're they're there it's going to collide with those guys and you know, obviously we play it back it's going to it's going to look a little bit better right now there's still a lot of uh a lot of parameters that we want to modify for this to get that initial um, hair to relax nicely. So I'm going to jump into my hair system and because we played around with that scale, I'm just going to increase my drag and I'm also going to give it some dampening. So the dampening is going to pull some energy out of that sim. You can see, you know, as I, as if I increase that dampening a lot and, and rewind it and play it back, it moves a little bit slower. It's dampened a good bit more. So this is just sort of pulling some energy out of the sim so that we can get that initial um, initial state set for our hair, which is uh, which is looking pretty good here. All right, so I like the way it's moving dynamically, but there's still no volume to the hair. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the self-collision engine to let these hairs sort of stack on top of each other and give it a nice volume, at, a volume to it. Some thickness is going to go a long way into making this head of hair look a little bit more realistic. So if we play this back, um, you know what, I can turn my clumps down to one here, and we'll play it back. So it's going to drop down on itself now, and my collision thickness is, a, is you know, the, the kind of collision object, the tube that's sort of running down each one of those guys is a little thick. So if we just drop that clump width down, you know, we can get a happy, a happy range where it, you know, it looks like a head of hair, it's got some volume to it. That's looking pretty cool. I like that. Maybe give it a little bit more here. Something like that. So that looks good. The problem is, you know, he looks like he looks like cousin it, right? He's got like no bangs, no short hair on the front here. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start to trim this hair back. Now you might think, well, I'll just take the hair on the front and scale it. Like you can grab the hair and there's this in hair scale tool. You can also scale at the follicle level, which is actually, you know, pretty cool. Let's let's get out of that scale tool and let's just go ahead and grab a follicle and I'll show you that. You can think of the follicle as a local transform. That's really the easiest way to think of it. Like if we jump in here and grab 
that guy. Let's deselect that hair. I've got that follicle selected, right? So if I wanted to delete that hair, I could just delete that start curve, or I could delete that follicle. Or in this example, what we're going to do is we're just going to scale that guy in Z, right? So if you scale a follicle in Z, it actually scales, you know, basically the start curve and the rest curve, and the, and the current position goes along for the ride. So that's one way of doing that, right? Like I could take all these hairs on the front and scale them down. The problem is, if I, if I did something like that, basically I'm going to have different CV densities, right? I'm going to have like short curves that have very high CV count and then long curves that have the same CV count, but they're going to be spaced further apart. You really want to try to keep the spacing equal. So think of it like this. If you've got a curve that's 10 units long that has 100 points on it, if you have a curve that's 5 units long, you'd want to have 50 points on it. So my advice is when it comes time to, you know, sort of trim these guys down, we want to display our start position and edit the CVs on those. Just delete them. So if you just go ahead and you grab the um, if you grab the hair system, and you go to this in hair shelf button, there is um, show current position, show start position. You can also get to that using the in hair menu where there's you know display current. Right, you could pull that off and just use that or the shelf button. You know, it's, it's your your choice. So display the start position. Great, so we'll do that. I can now go in here and grab the curves that I want to edit, hit my F8 key to get those CVs showing up. Let's just turn those on up there and just, you know, grab some of these, these control vertices and just delete those guys out, right? So now, if we go back to showing our current position, jump back into our display here and play that back, obviously he's now got some bangs, and that looks, that looks okay. So once we get the hair sort of relaxed, you know, looking looking okay where we where we might like it, we can go ahead and we can grab the the hair system. You basically can grab a selection of hairs, right? I'm just going to grab them all and I'm going to say, you know what? I want to set my current position or my start position from this current state that it's in. I want this to be frame 1, right? So you could do that either with with the shelf button, which I believe is this one right here. Um Select start curves, relate. Nope, that's a selection one. Uh, there's a set current one on there for sure. It's probably one of these guys. Yeah, set start position from current position for selected hairs, or you can use the in hair drop down and you can say set start from current, and then there's also a rest pose. So keep in mind when you're working with hair, there's a start position and then a rest position that it's going to try to get to or try to maintain. And, most often you're going to set those guys to be the same thing, you know, your start position and your current position that it's trying to get to are, are more often than not going to be the same thing, but let's go ahead and just set our start position. Um, so set start position from current selected hairs, pretty straightforward, boom, so just like that, it goes through, it thinks about it, so... It's going to go through and do its magic. So now if we rewind this guy and play it back, obviously, you know, that's going to be its its start position and its and its um we're also going to use uh, we're going to do a little bit more styling in this hair and we're going to set the start position and then also the current position to be the same thing. So a couple of other things that you can do that are kind of cool um to style the hair. Well, let's go ahead and display those start curves. So let's say display the start position curves one more time. So let's just grab those start position curves. Let's grab some of these guys. I've got a couple of them selected there. And look at some of these other kind of cool curve mani manipulating tools. So there's these modify tools that are really pretty awesome. So if you just do like the curl, there's some options in here you can apply. You can go in there and you can kink those guys out with that curl. That's, that's pretty fun if you're trying to get some wave to your hair or some kink to your hair. So that's our start position. Another thing that you can do is you can grab um, you could grab some of these curves and you can say, you know what, I want to get that first CV from our start position. So by grabbing that first CV from those guys and I hold down my L key, as soon as I hit that L, you can see that it lock length that gets turned on. And this is a general curve feature. Any curve inside of Maya, if you hold down the L key, it locks the length of it. So if you hold that L key down and start to translate these guys around, it gives you the ability to sort of whip this hair into, into a position. It sort of traces the movement that you're doing, which is really, you know, pretty awesome. You can also jump into your scale tool, right, and hold that L key down and then pull those guys to a point, right? 
to taper those guys down into a, into a fine little point. So now, if we play this back, obviously our start position is this guy. Oop, let's display our current position here. Just click the current button and play that back one more time. So it sort of drops down and re-relaxes out. Now, if I wanted it to maintain that shape a little bit more, well, what are we going to do? We're going to set the rest pose to also be this shape. So we could grab all the hair, all the follicles, right? And just say, you know what? I want to set my curves so that they're the same. My rest position is the same as my start position from start. So we'll just say from start, boom, boom, boom. It goes through, it does it. So gravity is obviously going to pull on that guy, but you can see that, that those points there are, you know, they're maintaining that, that kind of pull. And you can see that the kink in the hair here is also maintaining a little bit. So there's a couple of other things that we could do to, to style this hair. Another, another kind of fun way of doing it is actually use a constraint to position the hair and use dynamic playback with constraints to position the hair. So this is this is a kind of a weird way of doing it, but you might find it useful. Let's say we want to grab a few of these guys and we'll grab some of their vertices, you know, something like that, and we'll create a constraint from those guys. So we'll say constraint, transform constraint. So with that done, if I move this transform constraint around, it doesn't pull the hair along for the ride unless I use interactive playback. And I always put the interactive playback button on my shelf. You can get that from Solver Interactive Playback by holding Control Shift. It adds it, you know, obviously to your shelf. So let's just we'll get rid of the two of those guys. So with Interactive Playback, it's it's just cool for dynamics. You know, I use it all the time. We'll grab this this little locator here. Let's get back to our object mode. Actually, I don't need to select geometry. Grab that little locator. Hit Interactive Playback. So it's it's you no know, dynamics is playing back. And with Interactive Playback on, I can grab this stuff and I can start to to move this around and position it. You can see it, it's actually pulling on other hairs as I do that. I could rotate this guy or scale this guy. So that interactive playback tool is pretty cool. And then if I wanted to have this become my new start position, I can just grab these curves, right? And just say, well, let's go ahead and set um, our start position from our current position. So now if I rewind it, you know, I use that interactive playback to sort of position that hair and it's all been frozen down now. And with that done, I, if I didn't want that constraint there anymore, I could delete it and just use it as a posing tool, which I think is kind of you know kind of cool. So off it goes, and then it starts to drop down from that from that current position. So just a couple tips and tricks on that. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which was new in 2015 on on the hair, is there's actually a more advanced way of calculating twist now. So if you really want to keep these curls sort of in the head, you're going to want to go ahead and increase the um, in the dynamic properties, you're going to want to increase that compression resistance a little bit more so that they don't compress down, increase that stretch resistance a little bit more. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it this new twist model. So instead of being a simple twist model, we're going to use twist tracking. And as soon as we do that, we're going to want to give it a little bit of twist resistance here. And by doing that now, my head of hair is going to you know maintain that, that kink pretty nicely. And it's going to... Um, you know, it's going to behave in a, in a way that's, that's kind of nice and realistic. So it's just a simple little tweak that was made to the way the solver works, or it seems simple to me. It's a button switch. I'm sure Duncan would disagree and say, actually, the math behind it was really complicated, and the way it works now is much better. But, you know, basically just turn it on. If you've got kinky curly hair and you want to keep that kink and curl maintained and the twist calculated properly, use the new model, not the simple model, and it'll, it'll work a little bit better for you. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. It's just a few examples of how you can interact with the in-hair system inside of Maya. Um, hopefully this was useful to some of you guys. Let me know. Um, I'd love to hear from you all. Cheers. Thanks for watching Maya Mondays. And check out my other stuff because I've got a good, bit of, uh, a good number of videos up there now. So go back through that YouTube channel and dig through those guys and, and watch some of the older videos because there's, there's lots of tips and tricks inside of those also. So thanks again, everyone. Cheers.